Good morning. Thank you again for joining Armanino for our webinar today, Unleash Your Intuition with ClickSense, the Next Generation Self-Service Data Visualization Tool. My name is Mary Tressel, and I want to thank you all for joining us. And I'd like to walk you through using your webinar pane. You can see the webinar pane in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. You push the orange arrow to expand the screen, and you're welcome to enter a question in for our presenters at any time throughout the webinar. We will answer those questions at the end of the presentation. Additionally, I want to let you know how to modify your audio settings. If you are listening in through telephone, please click the telephone button. If you're using your computer's mic and speakers, please select that. That will keep you from getting an echo on the pr presentation here. So, and with that, we'd like to introduce our presenters. The first is John Horner. He's a partner for our business intelligence practice at Armanino. He's got many years of industry and consulting experience uh, working with data warehouse and business intelligence tools. He leads a robust team here at Armanino, um, many of whom are well-versed in ClickView, and we are also supporting ClickView or the Click company in developing the ClickSense certification program. So we're proud to be presenting this information to you today. And we're happy to welcome Peter Smith, who's a partner enablement manager with Click. Again, Peter has a ton of BI and business discovery experience with IPM Cognos and Rational Software, and he is now working with the support and concierge teams for Click in Raleigh, North Carolina. With that, I'm going to turn it over to John Horner. Thanks, Mary. Morning, everybody. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an overview on Armanino uh, before we head into um, the ClickSense uh, webinar here. So we're the largest California-based CPA and consulting firm, around about 450 employees growing every, every week, it seems. Um, and today we're going to concentrate and talk about the, the business intelligence practice within our consulting division. You can see from uh, the slide here that we have won uh, a lot of accolades across the country, uh, top 25 best of the best managed accounting firms in the nation, top 100 largest CPA firms in the nation, we're ranked number 28 there, uh, ranked the fifth largest firm in the nation by accounting today. And we have offices primarily <coughs> headquartered around the San Francisco Bay Area, but we have uh, a national reach in San Diego, Portland, and Chicago, uh, and an international reach through our Moore Stevens International Connections. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about our click practice. Um, here, uh, we are the largest uh, ClickView Elite solution provider in the West. We've done over 100 uh, click engagements now. We've trained over 250 uh, designers and developers with our clients. Uh, we have uh, around about 12 certified click consultants now on our team. We have both an on-site, uh, onshore model and an offshore uh, model for development and support. We're a certified ClickView training partner, partner and we support both the uh, ClickSense and ClickView products. Um, and uh, as Mary mentioned, recently we uh, were the only partner in North America to participate in the uh, in Click's very own uh, ClickSense certification program. So we're helping build, helping Click build their certification program for the rest of the partner community and presumably the uh, customer community going forward as well. Uh, we do offer some um, industry and, and line of business solutions within uh, our practice and one of which in 2012 was voted the top new product by Accounting Today. Uh, it's practice, CCH practice intelligence, uh, designed to look at professional services companies and, uh, and what they do. So gives you a brief outline. Just a couple of other things that I should mention. Just uh, returned back from Click's first world user conference um, across in Orlando, and um, certainly proud to uh, proud to tell you that we came. Uh, three of our clients joined together in a, a midnight madness uh, Click Sense development activity. Uh, there was uh, clients from Enphase Energy and Autodesk and Varian Medical. And I can tell you that that team came in first place in that competition uh, at the World Conference. And also Rob Wunderlich, who some of you, if you've worked with ClickView for a while, might might know, also associated with Armanino here, 
they came in uh, third place within a United Nations hackathon um, that was uh, part of that user conference. So again, uh, gives you an idea of, of the, the levels of skills that we have as a team, but also the levels of skills that now some of our clients have uh, out there due to um, due to some of the work that they're doing uh, alongside our team. Okay, this gives you a little um, little idea of some of the clients. There's too many to post all of them up here. It would be uh, quite the mess if we did, but uh, it gives you an idea of some of the scope. And um, really, all I want to point out here is that we we can work with clients uh, who who might be small uh, small businesses uh, growing to the levels, um, but we can also work with large enterprise organizations. And this this client list really spans that. Um, spans that uh, range and, and also gives you an idea that we're working in multiple different industries. We work in uh, high-tech manufacturing, work in traditional manufacturing, uh, retail, consumer product goods, distribution, food and beverage, uh, a little bit of healthcare in here as well. And so it gives you a, um, an idea that we can work right across the uh, different industries and uh, whether you're a small business, medium business or a large enterprise business, there's, there's something that we can, uh, can help with. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Peter Smith pretty quickly here, but uh, this should give you a little bit of an idea of, the, of some of the things we're going to walk through today. So we'll we're going to take an in-depth look at ClickSense. Uh, I think Peter's going to walk through a demo of the uh, of the product in action from two perspectives, I believe. <clears throat> One is as a user, uh, i.e. after we've kind of developed something and put something together. But we'll also show you how, how easy it is to develop um, something within ClickSense. So without any further ado, I think I'll hand across to Peter and um, allow him to uh, take over from here. Well, thanks everybody for attending this uh, this morning, this afternoon, whatever your time zone may be. My name is Peter Smith with Click as a Partner Enablement Manager, and today I'm going to concentrate on the ClickSense product. And for those of you who have some history with the uh, Click company, uh, know that we've had a, a product out for many years called ClickView, and now we're uh, embarking on a second product line, so we're turning into a two product line company, and ClickSense is uh, what we're going to be focusing on today. The, as, as John just outlined, what I plan on doing in the kind of order uh, of the demonstration here is to give you just a, a, a very quick uh, high level overview of what ClickSense is, what, what its purpose was uh, in, in developing the, its mission, its goal. Uh, and what makes it unique, as we feel, in the marketplace. Uh, show how some collaboration, uh, just to start things off, interact with an existing app and show you some of the uh, very interesting uh, self-service visualization features of the ClickSense product. And then turn around and, and actually do a, just a very quick build using the same basic data that you see in the uh, existing app that I'm going to show here in a, in a moment. Uh, to show how truly easy it is to uh, develop these applications in uh, by uh, the rank and file business end user community. But first, just I'd like to give the the typical marketing slide. You know, wh what is ClickSense? What do we define it as? And, and ClickSense is the natural progression of of the Click company to reduce that accessibility gap between business intelligence of old where it was uh, you know, kept in the back room, the back office, uh, some uh, IT development community would develop some things, then uh, produce that to be consumed by uh, the business end users. And as time has progressed, the uh, desire for those business uh, users to get more direct access to this information and be able to do this uh, level of data discovery and visualizations uh, themselves has become quite the trend. And that was really the impetus for the ClickSense product. Uh, we had a ClickView product out for many years, and that was much more of a you know, build and publish to consume kind of model. 
And really, the market is pushing it to, to I want to be able to do things directly myself. And, and so the real goal here is, as the slide says, self-service data visualization allows a, a broader user community to get a governed set of data in their hands to do that visualization and, and uh, provide that additional uh, very flexible data exploration to answer that next question that, that uh, typically happens when users start to uh, delve into the data and information. And yeah, it's all about unleashing that intuition about the data. And it's in three main, ClickSense really targets three main areas. Uh, the, the, the initial focus is for this end user driven drag and drop creation of self-service visualizations and providing uh, very intelligent visualizations right out of the box with the, you know, no programming a smart search capability, which I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate in a bit. The ability then to also share that analysis across groups. The ability to take that information and communicate through what we call storytelling, having an embedded storytelling capability right into, right inside the application. Uh, and then the, the final thing is the, the entire product has been built with responsive design. That's the buzzword nowadays. In other words, to be able to uh, accommodate anything from mobile devices all the way up to your typical computers and laptops, but it was built from the ground up with the idea of being able to run this and do it, uh, development visualizations directly on iPads, iPhones, all the way up through your typical traditional uh, laptops and desktops. And then finally, we won't get into this aspect of the product, but just to let you know, there's, the, there's a, a server version of the product that allows you to centrally manage and govern simple to complex deployments, sure the security of data, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, once these applications have, have been developed and, and, and share it across a broader organizational context. So what what might a, a a dashboard in ClickSense look like? And this is this is the example I'm going to be using to just do a quick walkthrough of this information. And uh, the storytelling aspects of of the the product is kind of start as, have that as the starting point. Is it gives you the ability to take that dashboard and as you're doing some data discovery you're finding some aspect of the data of interest it's uh, revealing some pattern some trend and whatnot here's two examples of annotated uh, you know, the sales profit by product with the uh, uh, margin percent and showing these outliers that have high sales and margins how can we increase this uh, you know, the, what's interesting, we have most uh, amount of customers in the U.S. showing up versus uh, other countries and whatnot. And just interestingly enough, since the very beginning of my presentation, I've been using uh, the storytelling facility within ClickSense, even from that beginning slide, even though it looks like PowerPoint, but it's not. It's actually the storytelling ca uh, capabilities within uh, that's built in within Sense, and this is giving an example of how you can annotate and collaborate with uh, uh, with your users, uh, you know, with your management if you're giving a presentation and whatnot. And and if you're like most, if you've experienced a situation where you're you're showing a static picture if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, and then somebody questions that information, they may want to do some. Uh, well, what happens if I did such and such with this? What happens if I looked at uh, a different angle of data? I did a different level of selectivity. If you're doing something in, in a more static presentation mode, you kind of sunk. You have to kind of go back to the drawing board and, and uh, be able to uh, do those visualizations again and kind of come back to, uh, uh, to the, the audience with this. Because the storytelling is actually embedded and it's actually part of the application, and by the way, you can have as many stories, if you will, uh, uh, embedded into this application. It actually is actively linked to the actual live application. So if I were to go in here, for example, and highlight this bar chart, I can go directly to the application right from the story and get into the active application to actually uh, rummage around through the data at, uh, at this presentation time, if you will. And I'll use that as a springboard to kind of show what, well, what kind of interactions, what is a, 
uh, some of these new smart visualization features about ClickSense that sets it apart to provide this enhanced self-service visualizations. The first thing, if anybody is familiar with the ClickView product, is that this uh, ClickSense product shares that associative data indexing engine that ClickView has been known for for many years, where you basically have access to underlying data. And these visualizations are just specific views or windows into that underlying information. They're all connected together. So the first thing you could do if I wanted to go ahead and select the USA as an example, everything in the in the dashboard here responds to that selection. Everything's linked. That's done automatically by the engine underneath the covers here. Um, you can see that uh, you've got maps, you've different kinds of visualization, scatter, uh, scatter plots and whatnot. A couple things to note with this one selection. When I came up with this, Notice it, it gives me some ability to say, oh, let me, I don't want that. I want to go select something else, or I can go back to this. This is essentially allows you to have a preview of what if you were to do something like this, this is what you might look at, and is that indeed what you anticipated? I could say, yep, uh, that's the one, so I'll just make that the, the final selection, and now I can scope my um, uh, further expo uh, explorations within the context of the United States. And you notice as I'm doing that in the upper uh, left-hand corner of the screen, you see this country USA, that's a little cookie trail where uh, it is logging what selections I indeed have made. I can also deselect this very quickly as well. A couple of other things about the smart visualizations before I get into some details here. Notice that there's a scroll bar here for this bar chart as I scroll down. This is very useful, not terribly interesting with the amount of volume of data that we're having uh, shown here in this particular example. But imagine, if you will, you have quite a high degree of volume, but you can only see yeah, so much reasonably in, in a screen. But having this thumbnail off to the side allows you to be able to scroll into various areas. And for example, in this um, particular uh, graph down here in the bar chart at the bottom, you see there's one particular uh, aspect that is an outlier. It really sticks out. Well, you might have the, the data sorted in a way where you, you can see this outlier, but it's way down at the end of the screen. So it gives you that ability to see a, a very broad swath of information and be able to see that in a very reasonable way right off the bat. A lot of interesting selectivity uh, with this as well. And we'll get into that in just a, uh, just a moment. Uh, the other aspect I wanted to show in terms of smart visualizations, I'll zoom in on the, the scatter chart. One of the things is, one of the hallmarks of this um, new release of ClickSense is the whole concept of progressive disclosure. You've got a whole bunch of information here, and notice that only certain aspects are actually labeled. But if I simply zoom in using my mouse, or if I were doing pinch actions on, on a uh, mobile device, you could see that as I get more detail level and zoom in on the picture, more and more labels are, are being displayed. Because otherwise, you, you would just, it would just be a blob of text and bubbles with, that you can't, uh, certainly can't understand what they are at that higher level. But as you zoom in, it makes more and more sense. So there's a, uh, you know, that's a good example of smart visualizations, especially when dealing with a high volume of information. Now, what about selectivity? You know, I can certainly uh, highlight this particular scatter plot and go in and I can simply lasso a variety of different ways here with my mouse if I go berserker that you know as I'm selecting this everything is active I can select in the map I can select on the bar chart and everything responds uh, automatically to that I can uh, make that selection permanent as an example but suppose you have a user, they don't know fields, they don't know the concept of you know, database, they don't know anything about SQL, they, they want to be able to just find some information 
about clothing. And so there, there's a selections tool that allows you to go in and look at the entire underlying model, similar to a, a Google search of, your, of, of the underlying data. And I just want to look at something that starts with cloth. And I, I've got a category here. Uh, it shows well, there's customers with this name, there's suppliers that have that in there. But really what I'm looking at is men and, 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 and bath clothes. I can use that as my selection and that automatically scopes what I'm showing here. And then I can further, and you can see that selection here in the upper left-hand corner of category name. So I didn't even know, need to know what the, what the field name was for this, if you will. And if I select the US, make that uh, a further uh, uh, selection. I can start honing in on what I'm really interested in. I see, well, I've got the, even the map. I've got some interesting, uh, I want to look at the, the cities within the map. And let me, I'm, I'm going to just uh, make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit easier. And I, just like I could on the others, I can go in and lasso particular selection. I see, yeah, I've got an extra outlier here that's a little smaller, and I really want to focus on that. I can deselect that if I wanted to. And now I, I'm honing in on just that set of cities. You notice those, uh, that drills down to the Seattle, Kirkland, and Eugene. Now I can do some further analysis looking at the various uh, uh, products and the margins of products and do some further analysis on that. Now what happens if I were looking at this uh, on an iPad, for an example? Uh, the, the tip of the hat to the responsive design aspects I alluded to earlier. I don't have this actually accessible on an iPad with the, uh, the WebEx situation here, but what I can do is take this uh, entire screen and shrink it down to a size that an iPad might look like. If I simply reduce the size to some reasonable facsimile of, you notice that the system automatically adjusted the, the, uh, the, the various visualizations to smart, in a smart way, fit into that aspect of the uh, size of the screen. And this is, doesn't require any programming. This is actually just totally out of the box. And notice down here at the bottom, I made mention of the fact of you know, there was an outlier way off to the side here that I'm not seeing in the actual visualizations. That outlier was a, uh, mentioning earlier. I could then quickly scroll and see where that outlier is. And even as I go up a little further, notice how the, the, the visualizations, they, they kind of abbreviate those bars to fit into that smaller space in a very intelligent way and, and show that expansion. So you can see exactly that there's more data here, but you can actually hover over this and see the, the final amounts. So all in all, very flexible, very smart visualizations for um, providing that intuitive data discovery that we uh, alluded to earlier. Um, what I'm going to do now is leap in. So what, how hard was this, this dashboard to build? Now, I'm not going to build the entire dashboard. Uh, I'll build uh, the, the bar chart and the scatter chart just to give you a, a sense of, no pun intended, uh, of what this might look like. And what I'll do is I'll go to uh, the hub. This is the essentially the central place where I can start developing my apps. And here I've got a variety of applications that are already out there that I can call up. Note that uh, it, uh, the basis of ClickSense, it is browser-based. It just uses an HTML5 browser. So there's uh, nothing that's required on the, if you were accessing this uh, on a server, all you needed is a browser for that. There's nothing that has to be uh, installed locally necessarily. If you're doing a, a shared server environment and a desktop environment, uh, it's a very browser-based interface. So I'm going to create a new application, and I'm just going to simply call it Dashboard. I'm going to open it up. I'll 
And what I'm going to do is take the same set of information that was in that prior example application and, and uh, show you how easy it is using not point and click necessarily, just simple drag and drop gestures so that the accessibility to the functionality within ClickSense is going to be far more broader an audience, uh, applicable audience, I think you'll see. Uh, uh, to, to allow them to get access to the power of that dashboard. So the first thing I want to do is take my customer information, uh, baseline demographics, and I want to get that loaded into my app. Well, how do I do that? I simply drag and drop it. And in this case, it gives me the ability to change field names, select a subset of information here across the top, these column headings. This is coming from an Excel spreadsheet, but in this, for the sake of our example today, I'm just going to load this uh, data and edit the sheet. Um, and before I go any further, I'm just going to actually build that bar chart that we saw earlier, just to show you how easy it is to, to build something right off the bat, to go from you know, a, an initial data load to some visualizations. So in this case, I'm going to build a bar chart like we saw before. I'm going to simply drag and drop it. I'm going to add a dimension, and I go over to my data area here, the, uh, the fields that uh, were brought over. And this I can see my country field. I can simply drag and drop that and add country. Uh, if I want to add a measure, I can drag and drop it, or I can simply add this, and I want to get a count of customer. So I point a customer. I'm just going to do a count, and now I've got my graph. I may want to do some tweaking to this. I may want to change the uh, the labels here to make it a little bit more uh, descriptive. So I have a properties pane in this edit mode off to the right-hand side, and I'll call that customer count. I may want to change some further appearance aspects of this. I may want to uh, uh, get under presentation, and I want to flip that to the horizontal. Um, I want to change the colors to match what I had before, and instead just the automatic. I want to make it um, uh, by a measure, and to make this match up completely with the original app, I can reverse the color gradients uh, as I see fit. I can sit there and uh, also add the bar title of customers by country. I could also change the sorting. And again, uh, this count, you know, I'm counting, so the highest is sorting first. But if I want to sort it by country, I can do it this way as well. And I could just simply swap back and forth. Now I'm done, so I can save my work. Done, and I've got a visualization. Not terribly interesting, because there's nothing to compare it to. Uh, we like to add some additional uh, information to this to make this a, a little bit more useful, but you can get see the, the selectivity is all there built into the system. So now what I want to do is go back in, and I want to or, uh, add order information. So I have an orders spreadsheet. I want to be able to get that uh, loaded into the system. And you know, before, I had just a, a, a desktop or a, a facade of the application. Uh, do I have to go to a specific area? Do I have to go to a particular thing to get this loaded? No, I just simply drag and drop it. And I'm going to add this, because if you already had some information, you could overwrite it. Uh, same thing we saw before in this case. I'll just, uh, for uh, something different, I'll change this to costs, just to change the, uh, the, the data. And I'll go ahead and load that. So now if I go to my fields, you see there's an extended list of information at my fingertips uh, that's been automatically added. With this, I'd like to just mention and show some examples of this final little link. This is a master items. And this is something that I, I, I think that uh, folks are going to find very, very useful. It's an ability for you to develop a reusable area for your dimensions, measures, and even visualizations that have already been built or gathered together and put that in a reusable uh, area for a broader usage community or even by the author, the originating author themselves. And how would I develop this reusable area? Very simply. In this case, I'm going to take an example from 
uh, uh, take a subset of information out of the master data that we see he here and pull out a set of dimensions that I think are going to be very commonly used. So if I simply create, I'm going to take country and add that as a dimension. I'm going to take customer, add that as a dimension. Uh, I may want to do a drill down across multiple dimensions, kind of on the fly. This is not built into a, the data necessarily. I'm kind of providing this as an overlay. I go country, city, and customer. And I'm just going to call that uh, geography and add that as a dimension. I may also want to do some very basic calculation kinds of things. So in this case, I may want to pluck the year out of the order date that's in the data model. Here, of course, for month. So I'm done with dimensions. Now I want to go into create a few measures. And, and we saw a, uh, a margin percent that was in the, in the prior example application. And so in this case, I can develop a calculation where I'm summing the gross profit divided by the sum overall sum of sale. And apply that as my margin, if I can spell it right, percent. And I may also just want to get the uh, sum of sales by itself as an item. So now this has becomes a, a reusable area of, of the data. So you don't have to go through an entire data model, with, you know, which could get fairly extensive. So this could be a tighter, uh, more focused area, perhaps have some more advanced calculations. Uh, so you don't have to do that uh, uh, every time. And I can now take advantage of that by going and adding that scatter plot that we uh, saw in that earlier application. And I'll just put that over to the side here. In this case, I can do the go over to my dimensions and grab my geography and add that as a dimension. I can grab my margin percent calculation and add that as a measure and bring over my sales. And voila, I've got my visualization already uh, built for me automatically. Now here I may also want to do a few things. Uh, may not, the numbers are not all that great uh, in terms of, of uh, formatting. In this case, I might want to take my sales or my margin percent. And instead of doing that, I want to make it a number, and I want to make it a percent. For sales, I want to make it money to make it more uh, readable. Some additional things like, like that that you typically want to, to tweak. And now I can do my save and start doing some manipulations. Look at the USA, go in here, look at a particular set of data. So all the selectivity that I showed you earlier exists. Again, this is all automatic behind the scenes. And the, the same, you know, progressive disclosures. Notice that uh, these dots between Spain and Venezuela don't have labels until I start zooming in on it. A little home button allows me to kind of get back to where I was. And the same global selection mechanism that I had before exists as well. Now, one thing we may want to do with this is um, do one final little tweak. Maybe what I want to do is be able to uh, customize this a little bit to uh, pro 
provide some list box filtering for those of you who are familiar with click view. This is kind of a, a typical style that um, you'll see click view applications. So for those of you who are in, involved in, in that product, you could simply grab over from that master list the country. Uh, I may want to uh, grab the year. month and now I've got I've added a little bit more interactivity to, to the dashboard so now I can go in and select you know I, I want to look at the last two years maybe the uh, first quarter if you will and I can look at specific countries or maybe I want to look at uh, Canada and the United States I could do some further selectivity there. Just a quick note on developing a story, because we've we've actually uh, shown a story before. But how is how is a you know a story app uh, built? In this case, what I could do is let's uh, after this, we'll just keep what we've got right here. And I can go in here in the snapshot mode, and I can actively take a snapshot of, and, and that snapshot actually remembers what any, what if any selections were active in the application at the time I take the snapshot. So I can snapshot both of these, get out of snapshot mode, go ahead and create a story. I'll just keep uh, keep that as. Uh, the default, and now I can start looking at those snapshots and bringing those in. And I can start annotating it with text. We won't get it. For the sake of time, I won't go to a, a, a great deal of detail because I think everybody pretty much gets the idea of how this is being built. And I can overlay shapes uh, across this as well. So I can go here and highlight something over here that, that you want to, like we saw before with the, uh, the prior, this outlier and the counts, et cetera, et cetera. And let's save our story. Now if I were to go back into the uh, actual app, you notice I've got selections here already done based on my snapshots. If I go back to kind of the default state, but then I go back to my story and I highlight uh, this, see Germany is way up here, I can now go to source. And lo and behold, it remembered, that because of the snapshots, it remembered what I was doing at the time I made the snapshot. So this is kind of a picture in time to go back to uh, that uh, uh, so it's, it's essentially truly a snapshot in time of that information. That was really all I was going to talk about at this point. Uh, I think we're at the point 140, probably a good time for uh, some questions. Thank you very much, Peter. So um, yes, this is the time now to use your webinar pane that's in the upper right corner of your screen and send in your questions for our presenters. Um, so we do have a first question that's come in. And that is, what do you see as the biggest advantages of ClickSense versus Microsoft Power Pivot and Power View? So, John, I'm going to throw that your way. Yeah, thanks, Mary. So, um, we do work as well with Microsoft uh, Power View and Power Pivot. We have a large uh, Microsoft Dynamics ERP and CRM practice here at Armanino, and so therefore get involved in some Microsoft data warehousing and BI projects as well. Um, I think it's a little difficult to go through a, you know, a, a full comparison in, in the time that we have here on this webinar, 
Uh, some of the things that we've seen is can be due to uh, just the, the preference of certain users, Power, power View, Power Pivot, um, is a little bit of an Excel add-in, um, and uh, people who like being in, in Excel can, uh, can work with that product and like that. Um, I think some of the volume, data volume restrictions that you, that you get uh, that we see in PowerView and PowerPivot would be one of the things that I might stand out with ClickView, although this demonstration isn't necessarily a large volume of data. We are, um, we are very used to dealing with hundreds of millions of records uh, in these applications. I also think the mobile piece that is, again, a little difficult to demonstrate, Peter showed you how the screen resolution is device aware and and shrinks in, um, so there are, it really it's um, uh, it, it's it's horses for courses. Different people have different opinions. What we try and do is not necessarily restrict uh, which products they should use, um, but I think there's uh, there's a place for uh, for both of those in uh, in what we uh, what we build for our clients. Okay, and Peter, the next question I believe is for you, and it is is ClickView Next and ClickSense are they the same product? Yes, ClickView Next was kind of the precursor uh, product name to ClickSense. It was kind of the code name, if you will. So uh, you know, the ClickSense is now the official release product. Great. Okay. Um, well, good. We thank you. We've gotten our questions answered, and um, would like to invite the audience. If there's any um, questions that you have following up, you can email John Horner directly and uh, we will provide his contact information to each of you um, at the close of the webinar. But we thank you for joining us today and hope that you learned a lot of valuable things about ClickSense. Have a great day.